and get started today. So it's National Embroidery Month and I'm going to be talking about some embroidery books that we've published and the story behind those books. Um, I'm going to start out with what um, the book Folk Art Motifs. If any of you got my newsletter this morning, you would have seen some pictures in the newsletter that shared some of the different embroideries that are on these quilt, this quilt. So there are two quilts that are included in the book. And uh, one was da is dated from the 1930s. So that's almost 200 years ago. And the other one is dated from the 1890s. And so I'm gonna start out just showing you those quilts and some of the designs on them that I find inspiring and unique. And then I'll switch gears and show you some techniques, some modern techniques for embroidery um, products and um, to work with, threads to work with, and um, give you some some advice on if you're interested in, in doing some stitching. And you know, embroidery is so wonderful because it's portable, it's low cost, it doesn't cost a lot, it's accessible, you can find embroidery floss or thread, you know, so many, so accessible. So, and these days when we're home and we have time and we find um, just the simplicity of it and, you know, that, therapeutic um, part of, of stitching, I think is, is exciting. So, um, or can be something really enjoyable in life. Joy through needle and thread, right? That's what we're talking about. So this is the, this is the earlier quilt I'm going to show you first. And it's going to take me a little bit of time to show you some of the different um, blocks that are on it. And I'll just try this and see how it goes. So what I loved about this quilt was that we have the darks and the lights um, and it's patchwork. You can see the fleur-de-lis there in blue, a little goat um, there in on the, the dark color, and then cute little, two little mice, um, it looks like. We've got, um, Michelle was wondering what this was under the this bear that we have. Again, this is tricky for me because it's opposite. So there's a cute little bear. I also just discovered, which I'd forgotten was on this. I don't know if you guys can see it because it's not as much of a contrast. Hi, Edie, welcome. Everybody tell me where you're watching from. Go ahead and comment. Guess what the prize is gonna be today? It's time to share it. Folk art motifs. So the book today is the prize and the, the two quilts I'm showing inspired all the designs in this book, Folk Art Motifs. Um, so you can see the eagle um, and oh, this is the best. I think this, here I go, turning it every which way to get it right for you guys, the bicycle. And isn't that a fun isn't that a fun embroidery? And this is a good chance for me to show you the borders. So this quilt has just gorgeous embroidered borders around each, hi Karen, around each block. And let me show you some more of the borders. How about this little um, pink? There's Mary Meyer, hi Mary. Um, isn't that a fun little, like, almost like a little rosebud border next to the rose embroidery? So these are all patterns that are in the Folk Art Motif book. Um, hello, Diane. Welcome. I see people jumping on. Um, a couple more I'm going to show you that are unique and different. Um, this particular, this pansy... I shared with you in the newsletter. So again, if you're new to my group and you haven't signed up for my newsletter, 
please head over to amyberrickman.com and you can um, sign up and then you'll be notified when I do live events and what my subject is going to be. So um, I really appreciate it if you do head over and sign up for the newsletter. Um, oh, the elephant. The elephant's another fun one. So as you can um, imagine, this almost 200 years old, this quilt, um, and I was, I'm gonna show the flower that I also showed to, there I go, how about that? <laughs> There's um, the flower that I showed in the newsletter today. Hi, Pam. Um, and note the, looks like this is worn off, but um, it looks to me like it might've been a, a portrait of an Indian there too. Um, so again, you can see the wonderful borders. And I want to also show you the back of the quilt because um, it was made as these were actually, in each square was independently um, stitched together. Um, so you can see that the final step for this quilt was the final piecing and there's no um backing to this quilt the backing actually happened was put on before the all the blocks were stick, stitched together so um again if you're interested in seeing more of the designs um i'm going to turn this one more time um this is another really interesting design in the quilt you can find them all in the Folk Art Motif book. And this book is available a couple different ways. You can uh, order the PDF from our website. In If you go to um, PDF books in the shop category, you'll find Folk Art Motifs. And if you'd like it in print, you can order it uh, from Amazon. It's available on Amazon. So, and we have a link um, to the Amazon store in our drop down of shop. So you can find it there too. And not only have these, what we like to do with these designs, just like it says, vintage made modern, come up with modern ideas for the vintage content. And what you'll see on the back of the book are the way we've taken some of the designs and I don't know about you guys, but red work is just a super enjoyable um, technique in needlework because you one color thread, straight line design, uh, very simple to do. And you can see where we went ahead and took some of the designs that were on the quilt and went ahead and did some red work um, towels. So tea towels or dish towels. Um, I love the rooster, just, you know, very um, traditional folk art motifs, the horse, um, and probably my favorite is the pig, um, kind of looks like a pot belly pig for his, um, just a big pig, <laughs> so I noticed that the pig t was twice on this quilt, so, um, and there's Sherry, hi Sherry, uh, so the pig was a popular design, so it's good that we stitched him out on a towel. Now on the cover of the book was this, the wheat. So there you can see the wheat. And I think um, being from Kansas, um, where we have beautiful uh, Flint Hills full of wheat, um, this is a just a fun traditional design that's timeless. Um, and again, you can see the border here. So I'm gonna show you in the book, the different, um, of course in the book you'll find just the basic stitches. Uh, and then you'll also find that we added um, instructions to do all the different borders. So if you're wondering which stitches to put together for which borders, we give you everything you need um, in the book to put together these different borders. I'll show you another page of them. So, and again, you can apply those borders to any 
embroidery you're doing. It, they're really nice uh, universal designs that can help you out. Another fun design in the book was the peacock. And here we did the peacock on a cream towel. And how fun is this ball fringe? I think my friend Nancy Ornst stitched this one and I love the idea of the ball fringe. And again, the ball fringe has a little border, just a little touch that that detail just makes it. Um, and then again, you can stitch these on white or on a darker color. You can see how our peacock presented itself in multicolors and in this case, this was a fun little idea. This is just twill tape. So um, a twill tape border added, and then again, one of the decorative stitches right there um, to add that accent of color. So I hope you guys can see all this well. Um, I see Kate and Lynn, hi Lynn. Um, Again, tell me where you're from, where you're watching from. Comment if you see something you like or um, you have a question. You're welcome to ask questions. I can answer them later. And remember, if you stay till the end, the winner will, uh, Michelle will help me pick a winner at the end for the Folk Art Motif book. Now I'm going to talk about uh, the other quilt that was in the part of the folk art motif and the inspiration for the book. And this, this is an amazing quilt as well. These are two really, really special um, pieces that I have been lucky enough to um, acquire. And I'll tell you, my, I believe I acquired both of these quilts at the International Quilt Market or Festival. It's a wonderful show and many antique um, textile dealers exhibit there. Um, there's Tenny Roche who sells there. Um, Cindy's Antique Quilts is another vendor that has wonderful vintage textiles. So again, because of COVID, these, these events aren't happening um, currently, but I'm sure they'll be back uh, in the future. And I would encourage you if you love vintage textiles and um, enjoy quilts, creativity with needle and thread, the quilt market and festival, wonderful show. And uh, we actually have a show coming up here in Kansas City in June that our quilt guilds put on. Um, and that's going to be out at the convention center. So I'm crossing my fingers that um, that show happens. I don't see why I'm hopeful that it will. And we actually are signed up to have um, a booth out there too. So um, if you're in Kansas City, just a um, heads up, save the date kind of thing um, for Kansas City's Quilt Guild show. This is red work. This is a masterpiece of red work. There are almost 300 different um, embroidered designs in this wonderful piece and I love I don't know if this is a lobster or a crawdad um, but when I was a kid I used to head to the creek to catch crawdads so I have a special fondness for that particular motif um, let me get it straight and centered there I go so I think it's a crawdad Michelle it's it's claws are a little smaller <laughs> All right, and then, you know, there's an umbrella, we've got florals. Um, oh, look at the, here, over here, I have the acorns. Um, see if I can show you those. So again, the, the actual um, designs are quite delightful and whimsical. And then when it comes to the detail of the stitching and the, the craftsmanship, you can see how um, really this is a finer thread than, um, I wouldn't say this is more of a, this is not really an embroidery floss, I wouldn't think. Um, we like to use a 12 weight sulky thread. And if you go actually to my blog post that we just uh, posted yesterday, you can see all the, um, 
You can see the crossroads thread that we recommend, the 12 weight, and there's a different packs of color. Um, but the 12 weight is wonderful. It's on petite spools. So it's really convenient. You don't have to separate your threads like you sometimes do with embroidery floss. So, um, and you also get little finer detail. Um, there again, you can see, you know, the red on cream or the cream on red. Um, and I have one more. I loved this motif. Um, the hen, it looks like with her chicks there. Isn't that a cute one? Just everyday motifs were what, um, whether it be nature, whether it be birds, whether it be, you know, home, homewares, dishes, um, those were the kind of motifs that were part of these, um, this red work. And if you've heard the term penny square, a penny square was a small piece of muslin that was sold at the general store in the late 1800s. And those penny squares, children bought for a penny, um, and people then would stitch these designs on those penny squares. Uh, so that is the kind of the history of what you're seeing here with all these different motifs that they probably um, would, were bought for a penny. So if just interesting uh, history and again, most of these are designs are traditional, timeless, um, ideal for using on modern quilts, embroidering on um, like the towels. We've done pillows. So many different ways that you can use these designs. And when you're actually applying the designs and stitching them, I want to talk a little bit about that. You can, there's a product, and again, I encourage you to visit the blog post that I put up on amyberrickman.com and it's um, national, it's National Embroidery Month. So I think the post title is Sel let's, celebrate let's Celebrate National Embroidery Month. In that post, I also share the product Stick and Stitch and this is developed by Sulky. It is what you can see here on the before and in the after. So this is before, it's just a piece of paper with a, um, stabilizer that washes away um, after the fact, but you can see here, I'll peel it so you can see a little bit of what it's about. But this stabilizer has a sticky side. Um, what you can do is you can either photocopy your designs onto it using the photocopy, or if you buy the digital PDF, you could print a page, pick a page and then print it onto the stick and stitch. And again, I'll show you that package so you can see what it looks like. Um, and the nice thing about this material is it protects your uh, base cloth, your base fabric. So here's an example of uh, something that we were stitching that I had printed the design to the um, sulky stick and stitch and then you stitch, as you can see, you just stitch right through the material. So whether you're working on a dark color or a light color, you're going to be able to see your design. Um, and it's not gonna rub rub off or rub away. And um, again, it's just so, makes it so easy and accessible to apply your designs to fabrics. In fact, you know, I love the idea of adding embroidery. There's Ashley, hi Ashley, um, adding embroidery to denim. And so I thought I'd share this. Um, again, if you're using the, the stick and stitch, you can, you'll definitely be able to see your design and stitch right through and then wash it away. So this is a design that was part of our book, my book, Stitch Style. And Stitch Style has in designs for, um, inspired by bandana, but bandanas in my collection of bandanas. So here's the Stitch Style book. And it too is available as a PDF um, book on amyberrickman.com in the PDF books category. 
Hey, Sherry. Um, hi, everybody. I really do appreciate everybody watching live. It makes it a lot more fun for me. Um, of course, you can watch these. They're recorded and they're going to be in the group. You can always go to media and watch older videos. But if you can watch live, I appreciate it. Um, and there's always a prize to win. Or most days, most Fridays, we have a prize to win. Um, so you can see the, like, for instance, the Paisley design there on denim. Um, whether you're stitching on a color uh, or here's another fun uh, denim design, a cuff made from just a strip of denim jean and straight stitched almost like the borders from the folk art motif book. But everything you need is in stitch style and actually the the Amazon book actually is printed and has the transfers that you can iron on. So if you buy the PDF, you can print it to the stick and stitch or trace your designs, use another method. Um, but if our Amazon title does have the actual iron on transfers in the book. Um, so just information. Now, as I prepared for today's live, I realized I had no idea how many different types of embroidery there were. So the reason I discovered that there were literally pages and pages of different types of embroidery, I was looking in my handy this is The Language of Fashion. This is a book we published based on Mary Brooks Pickens um, original title. So this is a reproduction of that title um, that you now have available to you either in, again, a PDF format or you can buy the printed book on Amazon. And so I thought I'm going to look up and see the, the definition of red work when and how it was described in the book. Well, when I turned to the embroidery um, section of the book, uh, here's where it starts, down here in the corner. And then I realized there were, these are all the definitions for the different types of embroidery. Not only two full pages, two and a half. So, um, you know, it's amazing how many different types of embroidery there are. And I will tell you, unfortunately, I didn't find red work in the book, but I did find black work. So black work, like red work, is simply stitching in one color black and doing line art designs. Um, but they're learning about all these different types of embroidery. Some of them, of course, I'm familiar with, but many of them I hadn't. I had no idea um, all the different kinds of embroidery. So I've decided, I thought to myself, I wanna learn more about all these different kinds of embroidery. Why not maybe the last Friday of every month in, in my live events, I'll touch on embroidery and we'll learn about a new kind of embroidery. So if you like that idea, comment and let me know if that's something that you think would be fun to have as a ongoing series uh, of discussion that I do in the Facebook Live. Um, and, you know, there's so much we can create. And again, the love of embroidery because it's so accessible. Um, another book that I'd recommend that we have if you're looking to maybe teach a child embroidery is called The Sew It Book. And The Sew It Book was a reproduction of a children's sewing book. And maybe, Next um, next time we do embroidery, we'll talk about, uh, they teach samplers in that book and have a whole section on samplers. So I'll, I think I'll look towards doing samplers in uh, March's embroidery event and I'll share that book with you when we do that. So if that sounds good, that'll be the plan. Um, Let's see, what else do we have to talk about today? We have one, I'm also doing a class tomorrow, and I've told you guys about it a couple times, but I'm because the class is still open, 
I'm teaching a class at the Sew Expo, which is the sewing event that happens in Puyallup, Washington, but this year it's virtual. And it's going to be called For the Love of Pearl Buttons. Um, and I'm gonna give you the history as well as inspiration. Uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour of the National Pearl Button Museum in Muscatine, Iowa. So if you haven't registered um, or you're interested at all in that class, I highly suggest um, it's available Saturday and Sunday if you wanna be on the live event. If you, you do get a recording, if you do um, purchase the class. So if you can't even be there, but you wanna listen to it later, go ahead and purchase um, a ticket and then you can watch it. I think you have 30 days to watch the content before they take it down from their platform. So I thought that was awesome. And, um, you know, we're just having fun. We're busy working on membership content and um, that we did with the Vintage Modern Makers, are exci very excited about that. And we are also putting up new PDF books on the website. So again, if you wanna stay up to date on all the news, be sure to sign up for my newsletter at amybarrickman.com to follow along. So I think, Michelle, how are we doing on time? Am I? The 30 minute mark. We are about at 30 minutes <laughs> and that's usually, that's usually our limit. Um, I could talk more, but I know this is the attention span. Uh, this is ideal. So I do appreciate everybody who watched. And of course, um, we have our prize to give away. Um, and again, I'm going to review the prize because it's also the product. So if you don't win and you like what you saw today on the live event, I encourage you to go to the website, amyberkman.com. You can get the PDF or you can buy the book on Amazon. Um, both, you know, pretty easily accessible. And then you can start creating some of these fun, um, you know, whether you're going to do the towels or... You want to create, um, start creating your penny squares for a quilt. Um, you know, you don't have to do all 300 of them. You can, you can choose um, to edit down and pick your favorite motifs, whether they be the, you know, the, the, the pigs, the, the hen, the acorns, the flowers. Uh, half the fun is just looking through the charming graphics and thinking about all the the unique designs that were stitched over the years um, with this red work technique or black work technique. And so there you have it, folk art motifs. All right, Michelle, do we have a winner? I landed on Kate Kirkpatrick. Kate Kirkpatrick. I can't say that too fast, <laughs> can I? Kate Kirkpatrick, you are the winner of folk art motifs. So the way I need you, what I need you to do is info your, info your, <laughs> email your address to info at amybarrickman.com and we will, or she could DM me. you could also DM me on Facebook if you'd like to do it that way. Um, so this is the prize, the folk art motifs. All right. I hope you'll tell your friends about this Facebook Live if you enjoy it, enjoyed it. You can always encourage them to hop on and watch with you, whether they're next door or across the country, for that matter, across the world. That's the beauty of um, the internet and some of the, the, the positives from all our social media um, apps and sites and all that. So please, please, um, share it and um, also, you know, follow along on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, I also regularly share on that platform at Amy Barrickman Studio. So that's it for today. Hope you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, it's going to be sunny and warm in Kansas City. I'm going to be teaching some classes on Saturday morning and Sunday late afternoon, that pearl button class. But other than that, if I'm, 
I'm hoping to spend some time outside and I hope you get breaths, some breaths of fresh air too where you are and enjoy your weekend. Thanks so much for watching.